Hello sports fans, it is Tuesday, September the 16th, the year 2014, and as always, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Great to be back with you guys, NFL picks coming up for week number three. Let's recap the Monday Night Football game last night. What a wacky and wooly Monday Night Football game where the Philadelphia Eagles rally and beat the Indianapolis Colts in Indy 30-27. Eagles up to 2-0, Colts down to a disappointing 0-2. What a strange game this was. The Colts are up 17-6 at the half. The Eagles are moving the ball up and down the field, but they're settling for field goals. The Colts extend the lead in the second half to 20-6, and you're sitting there going, this is the Colts' night. The Eagles don't have it. They're not firing on all cylinders. I mean, it's going to be the Colts' night. Then the game changes. Philadelphia throws a bomb in the end zone. The Colts get called for pass interference. They put the ball at the one-yard line. Eagles score from there to make it 20 to 13. Next possession for the Colts, Richardson has a huge fumble. Eagles take advantage. They go in for another touchdown. They tie the game at 20. And you're like, wow, this game flipped very quickly. The Colts respond. They go down the field and score. They make it 27 to 20. They actually stop the Eagles on their next possession. And here's where the game changes. The Colts go down the field. With about five minutes to go, the Colts are at the Eagles' 22-yard line with a 39, up seven points. Here's where the game changed. I mean, this is a chip shot field goal. If they get to fourth down with Venetary, you know, he's going to make a chip shot field goal. You, you're guaranteed almost to go up by 10 points here. Instead, what happens on third down? Colts decide to pass the ball. Luck throws a pass. Looks like there's a legal contact on the Eagles, but they don't call it. The Colts receive a falls down, and the Eagles pick it off. From there, the Eagles go down the field and score. There was a big penalty on the Colts during this drive as well. A horse collar on McCoy. It was not a horse collar. Dragged them down by the jersey. That was a terrible call. That would have made it a third and long for Philadelphia. Instead, they gave them a first down. From there, the Eagles score. Tie the game at 27. Sproles is going absolutely crazy for Philadelphia. He's running up and down the field. How good of a player is Sproles? He is lightning fast. Him and McCoy in that backfield are lightning. They are so quick. Sproles had a monster game last night. So the game is tied at 27 with about three minutes to go. You're still figuring the Colts are in good shape. Luck has had like 10 game-winning drives in his career. You figure he's going to go down the field. The Colts are going to kick a field goal. What happens? The Eagles make a big stand. They stop the Colts. They get them to punt three and out. From there, the Eagles go down the field and kick the game-winning field goal and absolutely steal this game. The Eagles absolutely stole this game, and Sproles was spectacular last night. He was lightning fast, making big plays all over the field. Really, really nice come-from-behind win for Philadelphia. Bad loss for Indianapolis. you got to find a way to win this game. I know a couple of calls went against you. you got to overcome that in your building. You had a 14-point lead in the second half. You have a 7-point lead with 5 minutes to go, and the game is tied, and you have the ball with 3 minutes to go. Find a way to win the game, Indianapolis. Very bad loss for the Colts. Very disappointing 0-2 so far for Indianapolis. And Philadelphia, make no mistake about it, they stole this game. But hey, that is the NFL. It can change so quickly. At 20 to 6, I'm like, this is the Colts game. And sure enough, in a couple plays, the game is tied. And Richardson, another big fumble for the Colts. I mean, you got you wonder when Richardson's gonna put it all together, if he's ever gonna put it all together. And the Colts have no pass rush, by the way. With, uh, with the big injury to Mathis, the Colts put no pressure on the Philadelphia quarterback yesterday. That was a big factor in this game. So the Eagles steal the Monday Night Football game. I hope you guys stayed up and caught the end of it. It was a wild and wooly Monday Night Football game. Okay, without further ado, let's get to our NFL picks for week number three. Let's start with the Thursday night game in Atlanta where the Atlanta Falcons are minus six and a half over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Atlanta is one and one. Tampa Bay is 0 and two. This is a no-brainer to me. I would be shocked if Atlanta just didn't bomb Tampa Bay here. Atlanta is coming off a disappointing effort to Cincinnati. They're back home. 
Most of these Thursday night games, I notice, go to the home team. It's a short week. The road team's got to travel. That's one less day they get to prepare. Tampa Bay looks like an awful team. I don't like their offense. I don't like their quarterback. They lost to the Rams at home. This should be Atlanta all the way. I would be surprised if Tampa Bay is within 10 points in this game. I like Atlanta to just absolute, absolutely bomb Tampa Bay. So Atlanta minus 6.5 against the Buccaneers on Thursday night football. Let's go to the Sunday games. Here's a really tough game. Let's go up to Buffalo with the 2-0 Buffalo Bills are minus one against the 1-1 one one San Diego Chargers. This is a really, really tough game. I could go either way on this game. Now, the running back for San Diego is out. He's going to miss this game. That is a big loss. The game is up in Buffalo. <clears throat> I love those Buffalo fans up there. I, can, I could go either way on this game. But because San Diego is going to be without their back, and they're up in Buffalo. I like what Buffalo's doing so far this year. I like the way the defense is playing. San Diego's up and down. You know how they play. I'm going to take Buffalo here to squeak it out. Listen, if you like San Diego, I couldn't argue with you. I think this is going to be one of the fascinating games of the weekend. I'm going to take Buffalo to win a squeaker here, but I think this is a very, very nice game. Make sure you watch this game on Sunday. So I like Buffalo minus one against San Diego up there in Buffalo. <clears throat> All right, let's go to St. Louis, where the 1-1 one one Dallas Cowboys are minus one against the 1-1 one one St. Louis Rams. Cowboys looked really good in Tennessee last week. St. Louis actually won a game. I didn't think that was possible after seeing them in week one, but they did beat Tampa Bay. I think Dallas is a steal here. It's only one point. Remember, St. Louis is down to their second and third string quarterbacks. They don't have long. I know they beat Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay is awful. Dallas showed me a lot last week. They beat Tennessee. They had a good running game. Romo stayed away from the big interceptions. They have some talent on offense. Dallas, I think Dallas is way too much for St. Louis here. I like Dallas to cruise in St. Louis. So Dallas, minus one against the Rams in St. Louis. Let's go to Philadelphia with a 2-0 Philadelphia Eagles on minus 7.5 against the 1-1 Washington Redskins. Remember, RG3 is out for Washington. Cousins is the quarterback. Philly off the very emotional win last night. Now, Philadelphia took a lot of injuries last night. I want to see how many of those guys are out this week. A lot of guys came off the field for Philadelphia last night. This is a very, very strange game. It's a division game. I think Philadelphia is better. They are home. I have a feeling Washington's going to hang in this game. The way Washington wants to play, I think Cousins is a better quarterback for them than RG3. They want to make RG3 a pocket passer. He's not. So if you want a pocket passer, then Cousins is your guy. So they may be better off with Cousins in the lineup now with the way they want to play. This is a division game. These teams have a lot of history. I think Philadelphia wins. But I'm going to say Washington hangs in there. They cover the 7.5. I think it'll be closer than people think. A lot of people I heard this morning said Philadelphia is going to blow out Washington. I think it's going to be closer than most people think. I think Cousins keeps Washington in the game. Philadelphia probably gets through, but I'm going to take the Redskins here, plus 7.5. Maybe Philadelphia's got a little Monday night hangover as well. So I like Washington plus 7.5, but I think the Eagles will win. Let's go to the Meadowlands in New Jersey. Not too far from here, where the 2-0 Houston Texans are minus 2.5 against the 0-2 and, and disappointing New York Giants. I mean, everything tells me to take Houston this, in this game. They seem more together. Their defense is playing well. The Giants' offense looks atrocious. Everything seems to point to Houston this way. Why am I taking the Giants? Why am I picking the Giants plus 2.5? Here's why. The Giants are 0-2. If you go to 0-3 in the NFC, you're done. The Giants cannot afford to go to 0-3. Now, I don't think the Giants are going to have a big year, and I don't think the Giants are going to have a, a playoff run. But if they lose this game, you're talking about a really, really bad season. Now, I don't know if the Giants are that bad. They might be. But if they're going to win a game, if they're going to cover a game, you think it would be now. You think they'd show some pride this week. You think Coughlin will have his team ready at home. You think Eli would have some pride. I do like what Houston is doing, but come on. They're not, you know, the Steel Curtain. They're, you know, they're not the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 70s just yet. I mean, I think the Giants are going to hang in this game. The game could go either way. 
I like taking home teams with points. Like I said, everything on paper points to Houston, but I'm going to go the psychological route here that it's now or never for the Giants. The Giants are going to be a desperate, desperate team. Houston's kind of, you know, feeling good about themselves right now at 2-0. I think the Giants are desperate. I think they have to win this game. If they can't beat Houston at home, they are not going to win many games this year, the Giants. So I'm going to say the Giants show some pride here. They find a way to get it done. I'm getting two and a half at home. I'm saying the Giants cover the spread. I say the Giants maybe even win this game. I think it's going to be very, very close. Razor close, like 21-20 somebody. I'm going to take the Giants plus two and a half at home against Houston. I'm sure I'm going to pay for that one. Let's go to the Superdome down in New Orleans with an 0-2 New Orleans Saints on minus 9.5 against the 1-1 Minnesota Vikings. Peterson back for Minnesota. Hey, listen, I've been saying it for years now. The Saints are a different team in the Superdome. They play lousy ball on the road. They play great ball at home in that Superdome with those great fans down there in Louisiana. I don't think Minnesota is all that good. I know they get Peterson back. I don't think Minnesota is a good team. New Orleans has to win this game, and they have to do it comfortably. New Orleans is 0-2. You can't go to 0-3. You can't lose to Minnesota at home. I think the Saints will roll in this game. I would be shocked if this game is closer than 14. I think the Saints are going to come out flying. I think they are going to bombard Minnesota. Saints all over Minnesota. New Orleans minus 9.5. Look for Drew Brees to have a big day. Let's go to Cincinnati, where the 2-0 Cincinnati Bengals are minus 7 against the 1-1 Tennessee Titans. To me, Cincinnati looks like one of the best teams in the AFC. I love what they did last week against Atlanta. Cincinnati has a lot of pieces. They have a good defense. They have Dalton, who we think is going to be a good quarterback. Yes, he has to do it in a big spot. We'll keep an eye on A.J. Green. We'll see if he plays this week. Remember, Cincinnati was, what, 8-0 at home last year? Tennessee looked atrocious last week at home against Dallas. I mean, Dallas ran all over them. What did Dallas have the ball, like 42 minutes in the last game? I like Cincinnati here. I think they're just better than Tennessee. They are home. I think the defense is going to stymie Tennessee. Tennessee had 10 points against the Dallas defense. I don't expect them to do much against the Cincinnati defense. I like Cincinnati minus 7 against Tennessee in the jungle. All right. Let's go to Cleveland, the dog pound. You know I love that stadium. With the Baltimore Ravens at 2 and oh, I'm sorry, the Baltimore Ravens at 1 and 1 or minus 1 and a half against the 1 and 1 Cleveland Browns. This is a very, very intriguing game. Cleveland had the very nice win against the Saints last week. Baltimore, of course, bombed Pittsburgh after they had lost to Cincinnati the week before. Very, very strange game. Very intriguing game. I'm going to take Cleveland with the point and a half here. I'm going to say Cleveland rides the momentum from last week. They look like they had a lot of momentum winning that game against the Saints. The fans were really into the game. I love what I saw from the Cleveland Browns last week. This may not be your typical Cleveland Brown team. Ravens, eh, you know, they haven't played a road game this year. I think Cleveland is going to be the more fired up team in this game. I like Cleveland to upset Baltimore here in the dog pound. I'm taking Cleveland plus one and a half against Baltimore in another very intriguing division game. Let's go to Detroit with a one and one Detroit Lions on minus one against the one and one Green Bay Packers. This is another really, really fabulous game. I don't love Green Bay's offensive line. I don't love Green Bay's defense. Detroit is so up and down. They were up week one, down week two. I expect them to be up here in week three. That's the way Detroit plays. I'm going to say Detroit is too much for Green Bay's defense here. I expect Detroit to put up some points. I expect Detroit to get some sacks with Sue against that. I don't love that Green Bay offensive line. It's not the best offensive line in the world. Remember, Green Bay had a rally from 21-3 down to beat the Jets last week. I like Detroit in their building this week. I think Detroit beats Green Bay, so I like Detroit. Minus one over the Packers in another must-watch game on Sunday afternoon. Let's go down to Jacksonville with the 0-2 Indianapolis Colts on minus six against the 0-2 Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. Does anyone think Jacksonville's going to win this game? Now, the Colts 
blew the game last night. We know the Colts have a good team. We know Luck is a very good quarterback. Jacksonville looks horrendous. They got blown out in the second half of the first game by the Eagles. They got trounced last week at Washington. Does anyone think Jacksonville has a chance in this game? I think the Colts are going to lay it on Jacksonville, take out all their frustration from the first two weeks, and they are going to plow over Jacksonville. I know it's Jacksonville's home opener and all that. It doesn't matter to me. Colts win this game. I'll tell you what, the Colts don't win this game. Look out. I mean, then you got to figure they're not going to make the playoffs at 0 3. I mean, the Colts have to win this game. They will. They'll take care of business. Colts minus six down in Jacksonville. Let's go up to New England where the 1 1 New England Patriots are minus 14 and a half against the 0 2 Oakland Raiders. The first time I looked at this spread, I said, why is it only 14 and a half? I thought the spread would be 21. I mean, I really did. I mean, Oakland lost to the Jets in week one and then got bombed by Houston at home. I mean, I think New England is going to win this game by 20-something points. I don't see how the Raiders stay in this game at all. I really don't. I mean, they threw caught in the Wolves, the Raiders, starting him. He doesn't have a lot to work with. The Raiders, I mean, got manhandled by Houston in their own building last week. Now they're going up to New England with Tom Brady and company. I think New England wins by 20-something points. I'll give the 14-and-a-half. I like New England, minus 14-and-a-half against the Raiders. Let's go to the desert in Arizona. Here's a really nice game. With a 1-1 one one San Francisco 49ers, a minus 3-and-a-half against the 2-0 and Arizona Cardinals. Now, is Carson Palmer playing? That's a big question mark. If Carson Palmer is playing... I like Arizona plus three and a half. I think this game is going to be close. I love taking those home teams with points, especially you know good teams like Arizona is. Now, if Carson Palmer doesn't play, all bets are off for me. I mean, I can't take him to beat San Francisco without their starting quarterback. So we got to keep an eye on that Palmer injury. This is a very, very exciting game. I'll tell you, I hope Palmer plays. I want to see Arizona at full strength. San Francisco blew the game on Sunday night to Chicago. Arizona is already 2-0. They are leading their division. Remember, Arizona went on the road and beat the Giants. They had the nice come-from-behind win against San Diego in Week 1. Arizona is ahead of Seattle and San Francisco right now. This is a very, very important game as far as you know the layout of that division. Very important game. If Palmer plays, I like Arizona plus 3.5. I think this is a field goal game either way. They will be going after each other in the desert. Must watch TV. All right, let's go out to Seattle, another fabulous game, where the 1-1 one one Seattle Seahawks are minus 4 against the 2-0 and Denver Broncos, a rematch of last year's Super Bowl, where Seattle just, I mean, they just destroyed Denver in the Super Bowl last year. Now, Seattle is coming off a loss last week to San Diego. They're coming back home where they never lose. Denver, not impressive last week against Kansas City. Denver, I mean... They have to be thinking about that Super Bowl where they want a little revenge, but I don't think they're going to get it. I think Seattle coming off a loss, this is the worst thing that could have happened to Denver. Denver is walking into a snake pit. Those fans in Seattle are tremendous. It is an impossible place to play. Seattle's not going to lose many games this year. They lost one last week. Expect them to rebound in a big way. Remember what they did to Denver in the Super Bowl. The spread's only four. I like the Seahawks to rebound off their loss and beat Denver again. I don't think Denver is going to win this game. I really don't. I didn't like the way Denver played against Kansas City last week. I can't see him going on the road and winning here in Seattle off a Seattle loss. I like the Seahawks to rebound and beat the Broncos. Seahawks minus four. Let's go down to Miami, South Florida, where the 1-1 one one Miami Dolphins are minus four and a half against the 0-2 Kansas City Chiefs. Remember, both backs are out for the uh, both teams here. You got Moreno out for Miami. You have the Kansas City back out as well. So both teams minus their back here. Kansas City played a lot better last week, still lost. Miami was disappointing up in Buffalo. I have to take Miami here. They're home. I don't trust Kansas City, although, like I said, they did play decently against Denver. I don't trust Kansas City. I don't think they're going to have a big year this year. I mean, I like Miami here. I think Miami covers. I think in their building, I think Miami is going to get the job done. They're going to win by about seven points. So I like the Dolphins, minus four and a half against the Chiefs down in South Florida. Let's go to Carolina. This is the Sunday night game where the 2-0 Carolina Panthers are minus three against the 1-1 Pittsburgh Steelers. 
I, I have to take Carolina here. A lot of people thought Carolina was going to be bad this year. I don't know why. I thought they were going to have a decent year. Carolina, the first two weeks, has shown very good defense. They shut Detroit down last week. Newton played well. Carolina is home on Sunday Night Football, and Pittsburgh's got all kinds of issues. All kinds of issues. First of all, Pittsburgh takes too many penalties. They can't get to the quarterback. They can't stop the running game. They don't take the, the ball away. They give up sacks. I mean, they haven't scored a touchdown in six games. I mean, I don't like what I'm seeing at all from Pittsburgh. I know it's early, but I just see the same signs from Pittsburgh I saw the last two years where they were a mediocre team. I see the same thing here. The way they played against Baltimore last week was flat-out embarrassing. I like Carolina. They're home, minus three. I like Carolina here. I have to take Carolina. I think Carolina's defense carries the day. They shut down the Steelers. Carolina, minus three against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday night football. And let's go to the Monday night game where the 1-1 one one New York Jets are minus 1.5 against the 1-1 one one Chicago Bears. This is another game that could go either way. Jets had a 21-3 lead last week in Green Bay. Let's slip away. Chicago is down 17-0 at San Francisco last week. They come back and win. So to me, I'm going to go with Chicago here. They had such an emotional win last week. They were looking at 0-2, and, and they came back and won that game. They were dead in that game, had a very, very inspiring win. I think they ride that momentum here. I've been saying it all along with the Jets. The Jets can handle the, the weaklings and the bad teams and those type of teams. Anytime the Jets are going to play a decent to good team, the better teams, the Jets are going to struggle. I think Chicago is one of those decent teams. Do I think they're a Super Bowl team? No, but I think they are a good team. I think Chicago rides the momentum off their big win against San Francisco, and they beat the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. That is a very nice game, though. Very, very intriguing game. I could see that game going either way. I'm going to take the Bears plus one and a half in the Meadowlands. So those are your picks for the NFL Week 3. I'll tell you, it is really hard picking the NFL. I mean, the ups and downs of these teams, the ups and downs in the games. You saw it last night. Indianapolis up 14 points in the third quarter. You think they have the game in the bag? They end up losing. San Francisco up 17 nothing in their own building. Blows the game to Chicago. Ups and downs, twists and turns. I mean, very, very wild stuff in the NFL. Very hard to pick the NFL games. Okay, so that's where you are in your NFL. As far as the baseball last night, Atlanta lost again. They're fading out of it. Royals had a big rally last night. They were down 3-0 to the White Sox. Ended up winning. Very big win for the Royals. Detroit last night, 2 in the ninth. They get the win. Nice win for them. And Seattle lost. So that is a big loss for Seattle. Remember, we're coming down the home stretch in uh, Major League Baseball. Okay, as far as tomorrow, we are going to do our college football picks. Last week was just an atrocious week in college football as far as the games. This week is, I call it slightly better. It's still not great. I'll tell you, the college football, the first month here, has not been great. A lot of big teams playing little teams. Uh, not great must-watch matchups so far in college football. But I would say this week is slightly better than last week. College game day this week is in Florida State for the big Florida State Clemson game. Of course, Clemson already has a loss. So we'll go through the college football picks tomorrow. Okay, you guys are all set. You guys enjoy, I guess, your Major League Baseball tonight. We have a break from football for a couple days. So it's a Major League Baseball night tonight. You guys enjoy the games. Stay safe. College football picks tomorrow on Wednesday. You guys, I will talk to you then. Take care.